is how many of us wish we would have had a guide over the last three to five years versus listing the headlines of everybody saying things couldn't sustain, they wouldn't go on, and have taken advantage of the extreme wealth and equity gained by so many people who were not waiting due to inaccurate information. So let's dive right into the path that we will see over the next year while we're experiencing the change in the market. And remember, right now, it's the market. You can't live in the markets of the past, all right? Predictions of the markets of the future are important, but only if you're investing for one reason, which is short term. Remember, real estate is a long-term investment. So let's dive into what we're gonna see over the next year, which is most likely a moderate path to housing appreciation. Reason being, when you look at the economic factors, you look at the housing factors, is right now buyers are starting to experience more options. There's less competition. We have fewer bidding wars and less homes are actually contracting over list price. So as we talk about why that is here in a minute or two, let's talk a little bit about what's gonna happen short term over next year. We're gonna see less price appreciation when you buy a home. So again, if you're purchasing a property with the expectation to see the appreciation that we saw over the last couple of years, that's not going to happen. But homes are gonna to continue to appreciate. Home values will continue to rise. So year over year, less appreciation, but long term, when you look at the benefits of buying down your mortgage, when you look at the opportunity for tax benefits and many other things that are included in home ownership, is we continue to see so many people create wealth with a long term approach towards buying and selling real estate. So here's a couple reasons why we know that house price appreciation will continue to move forward. There's very little to no distressed properties, meaning foreclosures. There's very little to no delinquencies, meaning people not making their payments. And again, the extreme amount of equity that people have in their homes, even if we start to see that increase upward, they're in a safe place to utilize their asset to pay off their debts. So now as we start looking at, well, what is happening? There's slightly less buyers. Okay, there's slightly less investors out there. So there's a slight cooling to the market right now. And when you're in a mania-based market like we were in, a slight cooling feels quite different. So what this really leads us to is it's a great opportunity for those that were struggling over the last two years. So again, let's say that out loud. Those that were struggling over the last two years now is exactly what people were objecting to or complaining about. But what has come with it is yes, a little bit of a rise in interest rates, but if you want the rates to completely go back down, then get ready for the mania to happen again. So which one do you wanna play in? The short-term mania game? Or do you wanna play in the long-term real estate understandings, which is that we buy and sell for many different reasons? intrinsic motivational factors or why it'd be important to make a change, living close to the people that we love, creating stability, not having to deal with rent, making sure that we have control through a fixed rate mortgage. There's so many benefits that we have to remember, the pride of home ownership, success, so many things that home ownership has meant to people over the last 30 years, but not that of what people look to real estate over the last couple, which was a quick buck. So as we start looking at what's gonna happen over the next couple months, all right, we're gonna see sellers be ill-advised by the real estate agents and price too high, and those homes are gonna sit on the market. That's gonna to lead to more price reductions. I'll talk about that in a second, but price reductions are based off a mistake of this market, not an indicator of what type of market we're in. I'll get you the numbers there in a second. All right, so as you look at 23% of listings contracted immediately, that number is gonna to start to decrease, meaning that less and less homes are gonna contract right away and they're gonna sit on the market a little bit longer because of the slightly cooling that we have. So overpricing your home is gonna be a large mistake right now since this is the market that has less opportunity, short term. Now, as you look at normal price reductions, it historically is about 37%. 
May of last year, we saw 15%. Again, that was the mania. Only 15% of homes saw a price reduction. This week, we're at 23%. So when we see in August, maybe 33% of homes across the nation need a price reduction to sell, don't let that lead you to believe it's a bad market. That's going to be that market. And right now, this market still shows a very great time for sellers to sell and home buyers to take advantage of the opportunities. Just remember, everybody, this is what people were asking for, wanting for, and needing. It's unfortunate for some that the markets they're in, though, they needed to listen to the experts a couple years ago versus the headlines. So as always, I hope this week in marketing helps you a little bit in understanding what's happening in the market. So then that way you have a better understanding on what exactly it is to spend time learning about for your situation versus trying to time it. And as always, I hope the resources and education that you receive are what you need to better position your family for great times ahead. And if you ever need anything, reach out to me. I'll connect you with the best agents here locally and across the nation. And I hope that each and every one of you have a great first month to kick an off summer.